It is election season, and uh, we are having candidates on through uh, throughout this time. You've got early voting that uh, begins, uh, well, uh, this month. And uh, joining us on the phones to uh, talk about his campaign for Lubbock County Commissioner in Precinct 2, Jason Corley. Jason, welcome to the show. Morning, Chad. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know we had you, the last time we had you on, it was... Uh, probably about a about a few weeks before you officially kicked off your campaign and before you announced that you were going to run. So, uh, tell folks, you know, why you decided to uh, jump into this race, and also tell folks a, a little bit about yourself if they don't remember you from the congressional race. I got you. Well, Chad, one of the main reasons I decided to run was uh, just well, I'm a I'm a taxpayer also. Uh, just watching uh, watching the property tax creep, uh, which kind of bothered me. Also. Uh, I, the pay raises really kind of motivated me. I mean, we point our fingers at Washington, we point our fingers at Austin and say, well, look what they're doing up there. Well, we need to be pointing to downtown Lubbock as well. We've got our own problems over here at the courthouse. We've got our own little swamp going that needs to be drained. Well, so and... That, you know, that's what really motivated me to run. Also, just a little bit about me. Uh, you know, uh, my wife and I, we live in, and our two kids, we live over in Slayton, uh, small business owners, uh, you know, worked in agriculture, the oil field. Uh, you know, we have an online business. Uh, you know, we sell safety equipment for the oil field. We ship all over the entire world. We're just out of little old Slayton, Texas. So, uh, you know, I, I look at everything from a small business perspective or, or well, and I've also worked for some major corporations uh, in my time in the oil field. And, you know, you're always watching your bottom line. So sometimes when I look at our government, uh, local or federal, and just like, what on earth are these guys doing? You know, I can't run my personal finances that way. I can't run my business finances that way. But but local government seems to, you know, get a pass on this because they can just raise taxes whenever they need more money. When you, know, when you go around and, and and talk to people about this race, what are voters talking to you about? What, what do voters want uh, changed in in Lubbock County. What 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 do they what is what's their priorities? I guess. Uh, well, tax rates. The, the three big ones is going to be tax. Uh, well, the tax rate, the uh, the condition of our roads, and stopping the commissioner's pay raises. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the that's the main three. And so, what would you do on on each of those? Well, okay. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about no more hidden taxes. That's what always been a big point for me. Uh, as a central, excuse me, as a central appraisal district raises our property values, which your property value going up is not a bad thing. Most people, uh, their home is their uh, that's their largest investment. So if it goes up in value, that's a good thing. However, when you've got county commissioners who raise the tax rate along with the uh, the appraisal values going up. Uh, there you've got a problem. Now you're going to be paying more and more each year. And the problem with property tax has always been, you know, once you pay off your home, now you get to rent it from the state, uh, well, basically from your from your local tax entities, the county, the city, the school district, the hospital district. Uh, so, you know, but we do have to fund things, so that's that's the way we're doing it right now. However, uh, as, the, as, excuse me, as the base property value of Lubbock County grows, the tax rate ought to be able to come down. So what I want to do, I want to vote in the effective rate each year, and then let's take the rep tax revenues from from new construction and use that to pay for any overages in the budget before we uh, before we vote to raise our own taxes. And uh, when when it comes to the tax rate, uh, and I've been I've been talking to the uh, candidates for Lubbock County Judge about this. As you mm-hmm. know, state legislature they wanted to put a uh, if you want to call it a cap, you can call it a cap, but but they wanted to put this. Uh, and, and the governor's come out recently and said a 2.5% cap, basically, before it triggers an election, an automatic election. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would you think gotcha. about that? There were a couple of uh, county commissioners who were against that uh, proposal in the uh, during the last legislative session. Where would you be on that? I'm all for it. A two and uh, a two point five. Now that was a cap on uh, on revenue, right? Yeah. Not a uh, well on okay. on property taxes going up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Also, the uh, a four percent, uh, you know, four percent increase. That sounds that sounds fine to me. Um, you know, county. I have to budget my business around you know uh, around the income that's coming in. I can't just go out and vote myself a pay raise. So, I don't think the county ought to be able to do the same. Also. Uh, a lot of people said that, well, you know, that, that tax, you know, the the state setting a cap on that's not going to affect uh, Lubbock. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, we have had some we have had some uh, tax rates that went all the way up to the rollback rate. Uh, when we funded when we funded the uh, the new jail, 
you know, I believe that was a $75 million bond. Okay, that did not include the money to pay for new employees that were going to be working there. So uh, that got pushed to the last minute, and our county commissioners wound up having to raise the tax rate by 7.99%. They stopped just shy of the rollback rate. Well, if you'll go ahead and set that rollback rate at 4% as opposed to 8%, you're going to see a lot less jump in that tax rate. So I, I agree with it. I think it'd be great. What, uh, when it comes to public safety, it's an issue that pops up with the Lubbock County commissioners and in and, and all race, uh, all races fall on the county side. Uh, public safety is one of the big issues of the day. Have you sat down and, and, and talked with the sheriff and had any discussions with him about uh, what, you know, what he may need and, and, and what the county may need? And, and how do you think things are going with uh, Sheriff Kelly Rowe? I think the sheriff's doing great. Uh, you know, my opponent made some comments that, uh, uh, that Sheriff Rowe didn't know how to prioritize expenses for the uh, for the sheriff's office. Um, I'm going to go ahead and completely disagree with that. Uh, I think our commissioners have not quite prioritized, uh, you know, they, they haven't prioritized public safety the way that they should. And part of that is going to be funding the sheriff's department. Uh, 2010, our, uh, our sheriff's department used to the pay raises over there for the for the sheriff's uh, excuse me for deputies and employees of the sheriff's department ran off of a merit system. The problem with using the merit system uh, in there, it doesn't fit the sheriff's, the sheriff's office model very well. So what you can have happen is you can have guys that, you know, they stay in the same position for uh, X number of years and before too long, they're making more money than their bosses, but they haven't, uh, but they haven't moved up. So, um, you know, now we're, you're paying big bucks, or excuse me, the county's paying uh, big bucks for, a, uh, for an employee that hasn't, you know, moved up into management or hasn't moved up, uh, you know, in rank. Uh, so what the sheriff did was implement a a step program. You know, if you start out, you start out as a deputy, you can be a deputy for you know three. Your pay will increase for three years, and or, and then you have to go to a sergeant, to a lieutenant, and you can only stay in those positions for so long and still receive a pay raise before you have to rank up in order to to receive more funding or to receive a, a pay raise. Right. So that system made really good makes makes good sense on the model that they're using over there. Well, uh, our county commissioners didn't didn't fully fund that. They wanted a three year plan and the first year they didn't this flat didn't fund it. Um, so here's the so the problem with that is I mean you've got to pay people. We all go to work, you know, to pay our bills. I mean that's that's the long and the short of it. So it makes it very difficult for the sheriff to uh, you know to keep good officers if he can't pay, if he's not competitive with his pay as far as you know as compared to other counties and to other agencies. Um, we need to be. We need to make sure that the sheriff's got the funding to uh, to be pet, uh, competitive with other agencies. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep good officers. Uh, something else that we need to get fixed, as far as the sheriff's office is concerned, and I consider this to be a public safety issue because it takes care of the people that that help keep us safe. Uh, the county insurance. Um, back in 2010, uh, we had a huge we had a huge shift in county insurance. They went from Blue Cross Blue Shield plan, which was pretty good, to an Aetna plan. Which talking to the county employees, nobody's happy with it. Uh, the coverage is pretty weak, and also it's expensive. Um, so our commissioners put together these committees to look at things like this. Uh, one of them being the insurance committee. Now, here's what bothers me about this committee: the fact that the sheriff's office employs about 515 people. However, they don't have a seat at the table on the insurance committee. That's a problem. Uh, they should. They're the. They're the. As far as manpower is concerned. That's the largest department at the at the uh, at the county, so they need to have a seat at that table. They need to be in there to where they can you know have some input on that. Also, they're no, they don't have a seat on the workman's comp committee as well. They have the most number of workman's comp claims and the most number of people. So we need to make sure that uh, the sheriff's office is well represented on our committees that are making recommendations. The other problem with our committee system right now is that we do not we've got county commissioners sitting on those committees. That completely negates the whole committee system. It's like, uh, Chad, let's say you, uh, you owned a warehouse, you had about 10 employees, and you wanted to know if there were ways that you could save money to make the business more efficient, so you put your wife on the committee. Well, those 10 employees are all going to look at your wife, and anything that she suggests, they're going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. That's what we're going to do. You're never going to get a true uh, – you're never going to get their real opinion on, uh, on what you could do to be more efficient. We have the same problem at the county with the commissioners sitting on those, com- on those committees. Jason Corley, candidate for Lubbock County Commissioner in Precinct 2. Jason, where can people find more information about you? Uh, you can go to the website. It's uh, votejasoncorley.com. Uh, you can message me on Facebook as well. Or, like always, I give everyone my cell phone number, 806-577-9778.
All right, very good, Jason. Uh, let's get let's get you back on before uh, early voting starts. We appreciate you uh, joining us today, and uh, good luck. Thank you, Chad. That's Jason Corley, candidate for Lubbock County Commissioner in Precinct Two. Chad Eastie Show KFYO.